for all of us. It's about predicting where the consumer is going and getting half of it right. One of the things we want to do is create ads that don't suck. Embracing change creates great possibility. I'm Alan Hart, and this is Marketing Today. Today on the show, I've got Mark Viden. He's the Senior Vice President of Brand for Common Spirit Health, one of the largest health systems in the U.S. He drives brand development, advertising, and digital strategies that promote the growth, awareness, and consumer preferences across the organization. As part of these efforts, Mark is spearheading the award-winning Hello Human Kindness brand platform, which communicates the organization's approach to care through kindness. He's also currently leading the platform's national expansion and his vision, which includes content showcasing touching moments and relationships, ensures patients, physicians, and employees are intrinsically aware of the unyielding commitment to humanity the organization is making. On the show today, we talk about that brand platform, how it came about, what and how it comes to life across the people, practices, and communications. We'll talk a little bit about the emotional connection, as well as tools and things in the ether like Gen AI and the impact that we should be thinking about. That and much more with Mark Viden. Mark, welcome to the show. Thanks so much. It's great to be here. Yeah. Well, I know we're going to talk about health and healthcare and all kinds of things, business and marketing related. But before we launch into that, I hear you like wine. And not, not just any <laughs> wine, you have a, a proclivity to a certain region and area. So I'd love to know what that is. Well, absolutely. And uh, I, love a, I love a marketing podcast that starts with wine. Uh, <laughs> I wish I had a glass right now. But no, I live in uh, San Francisco, which very near uh, Napa Valley, Sonoma Valley. I have a lot of people who visit me and want to go to wine country. And you know what I always suggest is going to the Anderson Valley which is just a little bit north. Great region. It's, you can visit uh, local wineries that aren't owned by large corporations, but really meet the vintner, have great discussions. And so and when I'm thinking what wines are great, I love Pinot Noirs and the Anderson Valley really uh, delivers that experience. And, and, and there's, a, there's a winery that I'll recommend, but I'll tell you, you can't go wrong with almost all of them. And it's, it's Navarro winery. They make uh, some really delicious Pinot Noirs, fun place to visit. And uh, I recommend it if you're heading this way. Well, I'm going to check out the winery online, at least uh, at a minimum. It sounds pretty cool. And uh, I love wine as well. I mean, actually, I probably should be fair. I like pretty much any alcoholic beverage that's wet, (laughs) but but I do enjoy a nice glass of wine. Excellent. Uh, Well, from... uh, you're in the San Francisco area. You are the senior vice president of brand at Common Spirit Health. What was your path to to that job and and that that company? Yeah, didn't expect to end up in healthcare, but uh, you know, I started off as a as an English major in the East Coast, Colby College. By the way, English majors, I may be one of the a dying breed. I read in the New Yorker magazine that. Uh, it's a major that could be extinct in a few years, but uh, it served me well. And I always had an interest in marketing and advertising. And I, my first job was in Boston at an agency called Hill Holiday at the time, the, the, the largest. It was a real education in all things. And I, I loved my time there, but I moved client side a little later and uh, ended up at a mutual fund company. Boston has a lot of mutual fund companies. And uh, I managed a, um, a small marketing team. Mm. But I'll tell you, being from Boston, the winters just got to me. And I'm like, <laughs> there, there has to be a better, a better place. And so San Francisco weather really spoke to me. I uh, didn't know really anything about this, the uh, city. But moved to San Francisco and uh, ended up at a very small brand agency that had a lot of different clients, Houghton Mifflin, Union Bank. NBC. And I really was able to, I think, hone my skills as a marketer, having uh, all the kind of demands that those clients had. And 
And at the same time, I, I, I felt like I needed to get healthcare experience under my belt, just seeing the economics around it. And an opportunity came and uh, I joined uh, a Dignity Health. Gotcha. And then, and Dignity is a part of Common Spirit Health, right? It is. It is. Yeah. It is. Awesome. Tell me a little bit about, before I go there, I have to admit, I feel you on the, the winter part. It, it, <laughs> and, and more importantly, this time of year, it's five o'clock in the afternoon on the East Coast right now, and it's already dark outside or almost dark outside. It's depressing. So. And, it, well, and, and, and well, going to work and having to shovel out your car. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that was, gosh. That was just something that uh, yeah. dreaded. <laughs> yes, yes. Well, uh, all right. So Common Spirit Health, uh, you started at Dignity Health. Now you're uh, across the entire portfolio, it seems like. Tell me about Common Spirit Health and, if you will, like the, the scope of that business and the, the journey that they're on, if you will. Yeah, it's it's the healthcare company you probably never heard of. It's it's really a house of brands, but it is it is the seventh largest healthcare organization in the country. I think we serve over twenty million patients through brands such as Dignity Health in the West, CHI Health in the Midwest, and so Common Spirit Health was created back in twenty nineteen when two legacy healthcare systems merged: Dignity Health, CHI. Uh, since then, we've acquired Virginia Mason and the Pacific Northwest. And really, we, our, our geographic footprint is 23 states coast to coast. We also have partnerships with renowned educational research institutions, uh, Baylor College of Medicine in Texas, Creighton University Medical Center in Nebraska and Arizona, to name a few. Obviously, relatively young company. It's the fifth year of our existence. And I work to connect all of these consumer-facing brands through a single thread, uh, which is really our brand promise, Hello Human Kindness. Well, all right. You got to tell me about Hello Human Kindness. <laughs> tell me about this brand and the platform. It is a brand and it's a brand journey. So let me take you back yeah. 10 years or so. Organization at the time that I said, Dignity Health, Community Hospital System, air, based in California, Arizona, Nevada. And back then it had a new name, Dignity Health. And the challenge we had then was to reposition the organization to be more attractive for consumers and patients. And to do that, we needed to create a brand that would be not just inspirational for consumers, obviously important, but also aspirational for the organization. It was a, it was a time where really it, it, it was a holding company and how do we kind of pull everyone together? And so after a deep dive with our consumers, our employees, physicians, many and many long nights with our agency <laughs> experts, we found these two words that I think really nicely summed up our brand purpose. Hello, human kindness. Hello, an invitation for those on the outside uh, to know us better. And human kindness, a, a, a made up word, but something I think that, that's a little sticky, that lodges in your brain. It's, it's, it's memorable. It's a, it's a single word to stand for a lot but at its foundation to stand for our, our purpose. So this, you know, I call it a movement, and we really do see it as a movement, it has been an important part of the foundation of this new organization. And so at its simplest, Hello Human Kindness is a way for people to, to connect with us. It's a powerful emotional differentiator. And what it speaks to, I think, really is this sense of connection that when you're in a care environment, you're, you're obviously having a very deep, a meaningful connection, patient to caregiver. And it's this, it's this connection that we think offers up something to the world at large. And so when someone is fully present with one another, we believe there can be this awakening of this spirit, even healing. And this, this can occur whether you're a caregiver or not. And so again, it's this notion that in a world where we've become very disconnected, despite how many people we might have on our Facebook account, we've become very disconnected in that what I think we yearn for is deeper connection. We yearn to actually know our neighbor up the street a little better. We yearn to, to engage with one another on a, on, a, on a meaningful level. And so I think human kindness has evolved into this, this amplifier this amplifier of who we are at Common Spirit and what we stand for. 
not only externally, and, and certainly as marketers, that's important, but also internally. As I mentioned, it gives sort of a, a flag that we can plant that, that our employees, our caregivers, our physicians know this is what we are, are, are promising to each other and, and to those we serve. I love it. I mean, it, it, it does make a lot of sense, and especially for a healthcare oriented company, the connection piece, the humanness of it. I mean, I think most people, at least in the US, could relate to experiences of healthcare doctor visits or whatever, where you, you don't feel connected. <laughs> it's pretty sterile. And I mean, they have to be sterile environments to begin with. Like that's the definition of, of, of the what's needed. But but the human connection can make a lot of difference. And I've also seen, you, you mentioned like it can be healing, a healing element. Like it, I've actually seen studies of that, right? Like that. Absolutely. And you always hear those surveys every one, so often, right? The people that have friends in their life live longer. So there, there is more to it than just the human condition, I think. It's interesting. Yeah, that is, that is spot on. Absolutely. It's important for people's health to be connected and having that personal connection. So, so important to one's health and, and, and everything from blood pressure to, to disease management really hinges on that connection. But I'll, I'll share with you that I even saw that the social media, having virtual connection can deliver almost as good of, of the benefits. And so forming those real relationships be it online or in person, incredibly valuable and necessary for our health. I love it. Well, you've got this powerful brand platform, Hello Human Kindness. And how does it, how does it come to life? How does a brand manifest itself, if you will? Well, for us, it starts with our employees. Brands, if they're to be real, if they're to, to be something that, that, that unifies an organization and drives it forward, it has to start with, with our people. And it comes from what they want us to be known for. People come into healthcare because they have a calling and it's their passion and compassion that really we wanted to surface up and advance this powerful brand promise. And I think where it all ties it together, how it comes together in, in a beautiful form is the advertising. And our approach to consumer advertising centers around connecting with the heart, creating, creating that emotional bond with, with, with audiences that I think transcends the category and forms the beginning of what we hope is a lifelong relationship and a, a relationship built on shared purpose. Let me just take you into the sausage making a little. So we illustrate our brand purpose through found footage, uh, footage sourced from real people that I think captures these authentic moments of life. And, you know, while this technique is not completely unique to us, we really find this creative approach is so effective at shining a light on what we think is right in the world. And it really goes even a step further. What I think we're doing is we're attracting those consumers whose values align with ours. And as we know, having that alignment of values is critical for forming those real consumer relationships. Now, how we bring our brand to life, yes, it starts with our employees, but also it, that then extends into the patient experience. And so how, our, how that experience is, is fashioned and created is, again, stems from this brand purpose. And it even extends into our operational environments, our, our healthcare centers, our hospitals, urgent care, first aid. The experience design is just as important so that when people come in, they feel warm and welcome. They feel that the promise that they've been served up is now brought to life by the interactions that they have and the sort of visual cues they see. I love that. I love that. And I, I have watched one of your one of your advertisements, uh, it was a grandfather and a grandson and sharing a moment, a real connection moment. I mean, they both were bawling uh, at the end, but of, of just this baseball exchange and the, just the sentiment between the two of them, uh, it was hugely powerful. I got a little misty, I have to admit. <laughs> 
That's well, thank you. And great to hear it worked on that level. I mean, we really do want to bring forth these just in- incredible moments of of connection, be they family members, strangers, even with pets, or we even have a, a, a commercial where there's a colt on a highway stranded, and you can see the the mother behind a guardrail, anxiously mm. looking. A, a, someone stops their car, gets out, lifts the colt over the guardrail, reunites it with its mother, and that's the metaphor we want to serve up: that we care for everyone and everything. That the connection. And healing can occur anywhere at any time. Well, we're talking about just the emotional aspect of this too and the connection. Like how does emotion and connection play a role in healthcare and and maybe even the selection of how I think about my care? That makes sense. It does. It does. And building an emotional connection with consumers for us is paramount. First of all, who wants to think about healthcare? Who wants to think about a hospital <laughs> or an urgent care, right? And Nobody. Unless you need it. Yeah. Nobody. And so, but I think really great brands are present in your mind, at least subconsciously, so that when you do need them or you are accessing that service, it comes to fore. And so that's where by focusing initially on an emotional connection, we can begin to sow the seeds of, of alignment of values, of awareness, of trust, and really create that category differentiation. And I'll share with you from everything I've read, as society shifts to doing everything from their couch, healthcare has to be there as well. And so we need to couple this emotional connection with the rational shifts our society is making. And so it's, it's the emotional and the rational. I like that notion and the fact that you've got to deliver that into environments that are conducive to it, but it, it, you have to translate it, right? Like it can't be just the exact same application of it that you might have in a face-to-face environment. So, That's right. That's right. Yeah, you, you, yeah. You, you plant the seed, form the interest, and then as, as you go down the funnel, the marketing funnel, you then serve up the, the content that brings greater awareness and understanding and, and ultimately sort of utilization of the, of the services that we think are so vital. Well, I really love the, the platform and, and how you're bringing it to life in all the various ways, you know, employees, the communications, the patient experience, the operations, experience design. I mean, it's it's pretty interesting how it all ripples together. As you know, I mean, we've talked about virtual environments, but like technology is like this ever constant presence in marketing. And I'm curious how technology or things like, you know, Gen AI or AI in general enter the story and and Mm -hmm. how you think about technology in a world of human connection, (laughs) if you will. I think about it a lot. I mean, technology, as you say, is is a constant in marketing. And in my experience has been, there's always the light and the dark when a new technology is introduced to the market. Think back to when social media channels were introduced, the light or, or, or the positive of them was that, was that everyone had a voice. It was a democratization that was so widely embraced and people were so excited about it. But then, you know, I think the dark or negative aspect of that was that a minority of voices and views, ones that don't necessarily represent the the values of the majority of us, gained traction, disproportionate to, I think, the the people that were commenting. So on on Gen AI, I wouldn't say I'm an expert by any means, but but, but this has been on my mind a lot. And I've I've, I've really started to immerse myself in it uh, because of all of the implications that it had. And I recently had a chance to hear Danielle Credit Cobb, who founded the Google Empathy Lab, speak. And I was really struck by her work, which was in a nutshell, how do we make Gen I more empathetic? How do, how do we make it reflect empathy? Mm. And if you think back to human kindness and what that's all about, empathy, listening, being present, that's, that's at the heart of our brand promise. And so I really perked up when she was talking about how Gen AI is simply a reflection of of the language that we are feeding into it. And so as empathy and compassion is key to our work in interpreting human kindness, I really 
took this to heart. And so when I think about the use case and the results of Gen AI, it's really enabling a more empathetic experience. That's what's really paramount for me. And you could say that could be for any technology, but I think Gen AI, as as we're on this, this cusp of a revolution, that really is a focus and an understanding I want to, to, to lean into. I, I like that notion of that and how, you, how you're thinking about applying it in the use case. Your notion about social media earlier, let's not train it on social media. <laughs> let's not train the AI. Because I like that you mentioned, you know, the, the thinking back to when social media came on and the, and the goodness that came out of it initially. I agree. Like it, Initially, it was like going back to your high school reunion and then somewhere along the way, it turned into high school. Yeah, like <laughs> well said. Well said. That's yeah. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> and it, it, so we've somehow regressed to vitriol and uh, clicks and clubs, and uh, yeah, it, it's it's a mess. It's a mess out there. But um, uh, still, goodness occasionally, like you get to share. Well, pictures. And, and you think of what it can do. It, it's so oh, staying on social media and now yeah. Gen AI just for a second. So one of the things we do is really try to pay attention to what people are saying about us on social media. And you could, it, you know, it's, it's, it's the good and the bad, right? right? But what Gen AI can do, because there's a lot of that going on at all at once, is, and what Gen AI can do, I think, is, is start to take all of that and make sense of it and serve it up mm-hmm. in ways that are digestible and actionable. And so it, I think brands need to constantly be understanding where their consumers are, because what we know today, mostly as a result of social media, is how fast consumer sentiment can change. And so understanding that in advance so that you can be planful, so that you can address before it becomes a problem, it's critical to marketers. And it's and this is this is, I think, a real opportunity of of these emerging technologies is to be better listeners and then to to react more quickly. Well, it's it's always fun to have somebody to talk about brand and and the the uh, the connection that it can have for people. It's also nice to talk to an English major. I'm not an English major, but I'm I'm a psych major. But one of my good friends is an English major and also the head of advertising at a very large company. <laughs> so, See, so there, English majors can make livings. Exactly. Yes. There's yes. there's hope yet. <laughs> yes, yes, exactly, exactly. But one of the things we love to do on the show is get to know you a little bit better. We know you love wine and have a lot to to advise on in that space. Um, but my favorite question to ask everyone that comes on the show is, has there been an experience of your past that defines and makes up who you are today? Uh, well, that... I mean, that's a, that's a big question. And uh, it's sort of the rosebud question to cite Citizen Kane. I don't know if there's one singular experience I can speak to. The thing, though, when you ask me that, that I think I can say is that I've had a really good fortune to work for and with a lot of smart, creative people in my career. It started in Boston, and it's really continued up to this very moment with the work we're doing to bring the Common Spirit brand to life. They have really helped make me a better person, a smarter person, and the only thing I think that that then has done is make me open to new people and, and new ideas. Love that. Well, if you were starting this journey again, what advice would you give your younger self? That's easy. Take, take risks. Don't be afraid of the unknown. I mean, you're young, you're going to make mistakes. That's part of how we all get to where we are and just be bold. I love it. I love that. Well, this may be, we may already have the answer to this question, but is there a topic that you think marketers need to be learning more about or something you're trying to learn more about yourself? Gen AI. I mean, hands yeah. down, that is going to upend marketing. It already is. It's not to say it's, you know, we're all going to be out of work, but we do need to understand it. We do need to get in front of it. We do need to, to define it. I mean, getting back to empathy. We need to create the kind of marketing gen AI experiences we're going to want to be part of. Yeah, I 100% agree. Are there any trends or subcultures that you follow or you think other people should take notice of? Uh, well, outside of wine futures. No, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> uh, let's see. The, well, I'll tell you, music has always interested me. I don't get out to uh, the local haunts as much as I used to, but I still get a lot of enjoyment out of finding 
and exploring new music. And I'm keeping up with new artists through social media. I, I listen to a lot of music channels. My team, the brand team, knows a lot about music. And they're always bringing forth uh, pretty exciting tracks. I'll, I'll tell you, we rely on music quite heavily as a powerful mm. component to our advertising spots. I, I, I think they're 50% of, of what makes them so memorable. And you know, we know that music connects people. It evokes feeling and, and meaning. And we, I, I think we use this to our advantage. I'll, I'll give you an example. Uh, the advertisement you just referenced, mm. there's, yeah. it ends with a banjo riff from a, a relatively new band called Camp, two A's, from, a, from one of their songs, I think it's called 26. And, the, and I, I think we just really leveraged that piece of music to, to great effect. Yeah, no, I agree. I agree. And music is interesting to me as you outline it as well, because it's, it's subconscious almost like, I don't know that you, you mentioned that. And I, I'm like, the banjo, I don't re- I remember the emotion that it, all of those elements came together to create, but I don't always remember the song or the, you, the track, right. The musical element of it. And I've had this conversation with other filmmakers as well. And they, they talk about the same thing. They're like, Yes, it's it's like this unlock effect that music can have that you don't even realize it's it's doing it, <laughs> uh, which is which is which is crazy if you think about it. Like like the the scientist brain is like, how can that be? But it it is, you know. <laughs> like it's pretty funny. No, it it, it has the power to move, and it's yeah. you know, I mean, just look at movies and how the score. If you were to listen to a movie without a score, it would be flat and really music is the soundtrack to our life and people really leverage it in a whole host of different ways. And, and again, as, 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 as marketers, it's, it's one of the key ingredients. hundred percent agree. All right. Well, last question for you. What do you think is the largest opportunity or threat facing marketers today? Well, this is going to sound like a broken record, but the, <laughs> the, the biggest threat is gen AI. Uh, and I've already really talked about that. So I don't, yeah, to, need to go down that again. The only thing again is I'll just say is just be we need to be part as marketers, we need to be part of shaping the technology, not letting it shape us. And that's where I think really jump in, you know, we need to jump into it and and shape it the way that we want it to augment our work. I love it. Well Mark, thank you so much for coming on the show and, and sharing your knowledge, expertise and insight. Love it. Thank you for having me. This was a fun discussion. I really enjoyed it. Hi, it's Alan again. Marketing Today was created and produced by me with post-production support from Sam Robertson. If you're new to Marketing Today, please feel free to write us a review on iTunes or your favorite listening platform. Don't forget to subscribe on marketingtodaypodcast.com. Tell your friends and colleagues about the show. I love hearing from listeners. You can contact me at marketingtodaypodcast.com. There you'll also find complete show notes and links to what was discussed in the episode today, and you can search our archives. I'm Alan Hart, and this is 